Yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy Gabriel back here with another video for you guys today. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about why Tops needs to get it together, man. They need to absolutely 110% need to get it together. And we're gonna talk what I mean and everything that I mean coming up in just one minute. Before we get into that. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video today. Can we get a minimum of 100 likes on today's video? As that is the best way you can help me grow this channel is by hitting that like button to show your support on the channel. And speaking of growing the channel, we are doing a giveaway. We are giving away hobby packs of Series 2. All you gotta do to enter is be publicly subscribed, like this video, turn on post notifications for all the content on the channel, and comment who you think your all-star representative is going to be on your favorite team. I know selections are like literally like, I think, I think like next week. Uh, but hey, you can still comment whoever it is. Don't matter. And you can comment the selection once it's official. Don't matter. And then last but not least, let's go subscribe to my new channel, Grip and Rip Baseball. Link is in the description for that channel. Let's try to get this channel to 7,000. And let's get the brand new channel to 1,000. And I'm going, I'm going to give away the packs once we hit those milestones. And I'm only going to pick the winner if you're subscribed to the new channel. So I'm going to see who subscribed to that channel and choose a winner from that list. So, so that way it shows me you did all the rules and you want to go subscribe to the new channel. So like I said, let's get this one to 7,000. Let's get that one to 1,000. That would be great. That would be awesome if you can do that for me. And... One last thing, you guys know what I'm already going to say if you've been watching the channel. I am looking for McCutcheon Parallels of Series 2. I've gotten the majority of them, but I'm having a real hard time finding the retail exclusives blue and purple. For whatever reason, eBay, there's been literally one of each. The purple looked all tore up, literally all chipped and everything looked terrible, so I didn't even attempt to buy it. The foil looked like bad, like it was all chipped and everything. It looked terrible, um, but... I'm having a hard time finding them. I think they're out of $7.99 and $9.99. So they should be easy to find. I know I just got the red and the orange this week. So and it's funny because those are out of $1.99 and $2.99. So like, I don't know. I'm having a hard time finding the Kutch purple and, and blue. So if you guys know where I can find them or have them yourself, you want to sell them, I will gladly buy them off you. Just I just want to get that out there because... It's been a stretch, man. It's It's been a struggle. You know, I've never thought completing a rainbow or well, attempting to complete one would be as difficult as it has been. Um, you know, for Kutch, I really didn't think, like, his cards are, like, very valuable. I honestly did not expect that. Like, some rookie cards of some good rookie names are selling cheaper than what McCutcheon's parallels are selling for, which is very hard to believe. I It's, it's very, very hard to believe. But I guess, hey, man... When Kutch is back in the Berg, I mean, everyone's going to want his cards and parallels. So, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. I'm not the only person in the sea or the fish in the sea trying to complete the rainbow. The one of one is currently still on bid. It's like $500. Um, yeah, if you look at the guy's bid history, it's it's shill bidding. If you guys don't know what shill bidding is, I guess a little bit of a lesson here. It's when the seller makes an alternate account and boosts up the bid to make more profit. It is what it is. Uh, the card's literally just going to go back to the seller because he's the one who has it for $400. It's ridiculous. It's it's so bad. You look at the purchase history or the bid history. There was a bid that jumped up $60, like which is just makes no sense because if you're bidding, you want to go in little increments, not $60. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, a little, little fishy there on that end. So, not going to get the one of one, unfortunately. But, hey, the printing plate, I think, is still in play. I think there's printing plates I think you can get. So... Maybe it's not out of play. Maybe it's not. Who knows? I just don't know. So thank you guys so much for helping me with that because there are there are people out there who are actively helping me. And a subscriber actually hooked me up with the advanced stats. So I got that from a subscriber. So thank you guys for helping me. And let's get into the video now. Let's get into the video and talk about why Tops just needs to get together, man. I, there, there is no other way to put it, you know. The last 16, 15 months, however long it's been since Fanatics officially acquired Tops, you know, they, they acquired them, in, I think, in December of 2021, but you really didn't get to see it until February of 2022 once, you know, the official first release of the 2022 season 
actually came out in Series 1 that year, in February of 2022. So, you know, it's been about a year and a half, I would say. Uh, a little, probably a little bit less. Uh, but needless to say, you know, it's been a very rough stretch for Tops and Fanatics. It has not been easy. It has not been easy in the slightest regarding what they have been doing, the bad changes they have made countless times over the last 14, 15 months. It's, it's a shit show. That's the best way I can describe it. It's a shit show, right? And with yesterday's latest controversy with the fake autograph, if you guys don't know what I'm referring to, there was a fake autograph found of the I Love Lucy star herself, Lucille Love. And of course, she's not on this earth no more. She's long gone. And her fake autograph, which was a cut autograph, of course, was found in Heritage, in, in this year's Heritage. And it's a secretarial autograph, meaning it's just a stamp. And why Tops didn't find the need to authenticate it or, or whatever happened there, I don't know. It's inexcusable. It shouldn't happen. We're in a day and age in 2023 where you have the most technology ever in the world and that's still happening. It is very embarrassing. Very, very embarrassing for anybody who is working in that department over there because that shows you they're not doing their job. I hate, like I said yesterday, I hate the call for people losing their job and livelihoods, but man, like, if you can't get simple things right like that, like, what, what are we doing here? You know, what are we doing here? Like, you should want to put out the absolute 110% best product imaginable for your consumers because if it weren't for your consumers your hardcore consumers tops would not be in the position they are today to become the monopoly they are in today's hobby because whether you like to agree with this or not fanatics and tops are a monopoly they don't have no competition and if you want to call panini baseball competition to tops you're fine you are actually kidding yourself because they are in no way, shape, or form any competition. Especially after losing the active player licensing last year. So no card of an Aaron Judge, a Pete Alonzo, an Andrew McCutcheon, an O'Neill Cruz, Ar a Nolan Arenado. Nothing. You can't find them on a, on a Panini card ever again. And they will never be the same. Because do you think... Fanatics is going to let go of that contract? Absolutely not. And sooner rather than later, the minor league license and the MILBPA licensing and the Legends Cooperstown Hall of Fame licensing that Panini owns will go over to Fanatics sooner rather than later, making it impossible for Panini to produce any baseball cards unless they want to keep on producing USA Baseball, which requires neither of those licenses. So if you think Panini is a competitor to Tops, you got something else to look up and research, because guess what? They are in no way a competitor. I don't want to hear it. There are some people trying to convince me they are. It's not. It, they're not competitors. They're not. They're not. Unlicensed, no active players, why on earth are they competitors? They're not, right? And that's why I firmly do believe Tops is as bad as it is. Because if there was competition, you know, competition in any industry where there's two competitors competing for one another always brings out the best, typically, in those both companies. But like I said, since Tops has no one to compete with at all in their hobby, in their industry... They half-ass things. They do. You clearly see it. Fake autographs. Missing short prints. Fake autographs. I think I said that already. Quality control. That's the big one. In my eyes, that is the biggest mishap from last year. And going into this year, it still exists. Not as bad, but it's still there. And I guarantee it. I guarantee it. When Chrome comes around, whenever that does probably in September or October, for whoever knows. I guarantee you there's going to be major quality control issues. I guarantee it. We're already seeing it this year. Bowman wasn't that bad, but there were some cards and some blaster boxes that we opened the first wave 
print lines up and down, left and right, all over the place. So there are still some quality control issues lingering this year. Luckily, they have got a little bit better. I expect them to get better for Chrome and Chrome updates whenever those do eventually come out this year. But I'll tell you what, man, Top still has a long way to go. Because once that controversy last year of those missing short prints in Chrome happened, they lost a lot of people in their fan base. I can almost promise you. Now, you may be saying sales are up. Yeah, well, guess what? I guarantee in 2023, sales are not up. Sales are probably down. The only way you could say they were up is probably because they printed a lot. Therefore, sales are somewhat probably staying the same as last year. But, again, I just have to ask. I have to ask. Why does Tops decide to do these stupid things? For example, another stupid thing that really pissed people off this year. Series 1 Retail. Why on earth was it as bad as it was? Luckily, they learned their lesson. Because obviously, Series 2 retail looks to be very good. We already saw it with the, with the hanger boxes or the fat packs that I, I opened. Of course, I do have hanger boxes ready to open at any given time. Here they are right here at my disposal at any given time, right? So, they, they learned their mistake. They learned from their mistake was series one. But again, that's just another instance. That is just another instance because they saw that people like to buy hobby and they put all the hits in the jumbos, some in hobbies, which not much, but they were, right? And luckily, this time around for series two, they took all the hits out of jumbos and hobbies, but hobbies and jumbos are still good, but they're not as nearly as good. And they put them in the retail, which if you like to not spend a lot of money, that's good. But needless to say, these last 16 months for Tops have been nothing but hell for them and the consumers. Nothing but hell, literally. You know, every time they make a decision, like price increases. Now, inflation, I know, I, I hate to get political, but inflation is not going anywhere anytime soon. It's just not going to. It's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. There has been nothing done to help fight against it, nothing. So you and I both hate $27 blaster boxes. I mean, that's, I mean, and then when we get to Chrome, $35, right? We all hate that. No one likes to spend that money because at the end of the day, when the consumer saves money, it's best for us. We, we could buy more, right? That's how it works. But again, that I also do believe, I also do believe caused a huge factor in people getting upset at Tops last year. It did, it did. I know for a fact Last year, if you guys remember this, if you guys were collecting Series 1 last year, blaster boxes of Series 1 last year were $20. They were. And I bought a lot of it. And then, I believe the first set that price increased was, I believe, Heritage. 2022 Tops Heritage, which I did not buy a lot of at all. And then, Bowman came out last year and increased the price again. So, it went from, I think, 20 to 23 then 23 to 25 and with tax added on to that, you're looking at $28. For a blaster box, essentially, which is ridiculous. That's literally almost fifty percent more what you'd be paying compared to previous years. Um, I don't know how we get back to those twenty dollars blaster boxes, but I'll tell you one thing: if Tops ever found a way to go back to twenty dollars uh, blaster boxes, five dollars fat packs or value packs, whatever you want to call them, and ten dollars hanger boxes, it would be a way better hobby. And hobby prices, surprisingly almost stayed the same you know blaster boxes or i shouldn't say blaster boxes but hobby boxes of like flagship like i believe used to be like 85 so it's only like like a 10 dollar ish increase if that which i'm actually genuinely surprised that's what it is it could have been a lot more um but jumbos i do believe jumbos like i said jumbos i think were like 120 back in the day i think like just a couple years ago i'm talking like 2019 like 20 like early 2020 you know um, but the, of course in series two, they're 200. My hobby store is literally selling them for $200 series one. They're selling jumbos for 140, $60 increase. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous on that end. But I'll tell you one thing, man, tops has to get it together. The title of this video tops has to get it together or maybe something like that. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm going to title this video, but it's going to be something along the lines of that. I don't know. All these mistakes, you know, just imagine I made this analogy before. Story time with Grip and Rip. 
Imagine I'm on the top of a very steep hill. Close your eyes and just imagine this. I build a snowball. And with really tight packing snow, I, I, I get a snowball and I start to roll it down that hill. Okay. Imagine the hill is a timeline. All right. So the first stop the snowball makes is the price increases of 2022. The snowball gets bigger as it rolls down the hill. And then we get to the fake autographs of Randy and Rosarena in Austin Meadows. The snowball gets bigger rolling down that hill. Then we hit a huge spike in the road in the missing short prints of Topps Chrome. Rolls down that hill even further. Now we are dealing with quality control, which is the biggest one in my eyes. Roll down the hill. Now in 2023, we're talking about a fake autograph of a person who is very popular, still to this day on television, and no longer on this earth, and there is a fake autograph of her in a recent product. At some point, the snowball is going to stop rolling down the hill and just crumble and fall. My question is, are we getting to the point where we're almost at that breaking point? Because although Topps has tried to make things better in 2023, it is still far from perfect. It is nowhere near where it used to be before Fanatics purchased Tops. Because before Fanatics purchased Tops, you know, we had great things. Every product was literally very good. Every product had the rookies in it. They didn't hold rookies back, which is another thing I can make a whole other discussion about. How last year they waited until freaking October to make J Rod a base card, which is ridiculous. Of course, if you could have been lucky to get his card in Series 2, but 95% of us weren't that lucky, right? And it's just ridiculous, man. It really, really is ridiculous. Like, although they're not perfect, Topps is not perfect at all, right? They're not perfect at all. Are they getting better? Sort of. I'm not going to say they're great, because they're... Listen, if you guys collected before the Fanatics era started... You guys know what I'm talking about. On-time releases, multiple sets in the summer, multiple sets in the summer, low-priced rookies as early as Series 2 were in sets. Luckily, they fixed that this year. Luckily. And things like that. Never, sets, sets never got delayed in the pre-Fanatics era. They never did. If it did get delayed... It was for a very valid reason, and they would actually announce it. I remember, Top would actually announce back in the day when sets got delayed for whatever reason. Now, you have to go to a release date schedule on a, on a third-party site like Beckett or something like that to find out, oh, this set, Cough Cough Platinum Chrome Anniversary 2022, is delayed for a year and a half. Believe it or not, Platinum Chrome Anniversary is supposed to come out last December in the crazy, in the crazy month of December with all those releases. Thank God it didn't actually because that was just too hectic. But still, my point still stands. Why are we waiting until the end of next month? And that's not to say it can get delayed again. That set could absolutely 110% get delayed yet again before July 27th. That's the release date as it stands right now. Now, if that happens, we'll have to wait and see as it gets closer to that date. But... Worst Platinum Chrome Anniversary. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous how we are still getting 2022 sets in late 2023. It's almost halfway through the year. Actually, we're already halfway through the year, actually. Not quite, actually, but close. Very close to halfway through the year. And we are still worrying about a set that should have came out last December. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You know, if Tops was Tops and didn't have Fanatics... Speaking in their one ear, right? This company would be a lot different. This company would absolutely 110%. I've I said that a lot in this video, 110%. Someone should count how many times I said that because it was quite a bit. Um, this company would be a lot better off. And, you know, when I, I said it back then, a year and a half ago, and I'll say it again right now, a year and a half after the purchase. Fanatics purchasing tops was one of the worst things that could have happened for the consumer because now all they care about is money and greed in the old tops before fanatics 
cared about the customer and put them first. And now that is not happening. That is not happening. Not at all. So that's pretty much all I got to say, guys. I don't know what else to say. You know, it gets to a point where you just run out of words, right? And I ran out of words. Ran out of words. It's it's not it's just not right. It's not right what they're doing. I don't know how they fix what's going on. I don't know what steps we have to take, but there just got to be like a call to action of some sort. There's got to be. Something has to change. You know, new people need to be put in place ahead of management or something. I don't know. I don't know what we have to do, but we have to do something, man. We have to do something. We have something blue. I don't know. It's probably one of those World Baseball Classic cards, so don't get your hopes up. This hobby box, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this hobby box sucked so far. We're only like 10, 11 packs in. We're like halfway through, but this... And this is a silver. Okay, nothing nothing special. It's the Miami Marlins. It's whatever. Um, Vinny Pasquantino, who like tore his shoulder or something. So, yeah, I don't know. Is that a, That's not a gold mirror, no. That just is a normal card. Yeah, you know, the more I open this hobby box, the more I realize that retail is actually good this year. It is. I've opened every single format you can of Series 2, except the new $60 box that's not out yet. That comes out, I think, like next week. Um, retail is much better. It is. Retail is much, much, much better than hobby it is and i'll tell you one thing although update's not going to be that good of a set i don't think um retail will probably be the way to go to update so if you want to buy like a case of like fat packs or something or something on the lines of that or an open this pack as well um honestly probably you know um that's probably the way to go i don't know that's probably the way to go so let's see uh how are we gonna open this here let's see here Let's see. Let's pull a J-Rod, honestly. That's all I really want. That's all I really want. We got Jesus Sanchez, and our blue is uh, Alex Fado. Fado? I don't even know, dude. I have no idea. Is he even on the uh, current uh, uh, Tigers team? I, I have no clue. I have no clue. This box so far has been an absolute bust. Worst $50 I've ever spent so far. Hopefully we pull something good. I think autographs lie in every one in three boxes for this stuff. So we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. So guys, let me know what you think. Does Tops need to get it together? What steps do they take? Let, let me hear in the comment section. I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say about this. What steps do you think they should take to get the trust back into the fans? I'd love to know what you guys have to think. And I'll see you guys in the next video.